Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ask Lure here at PAX Online. Sorry, Camp PAX Online 2021. Uh, where it's it's summer camp. Welcome. Uh, we are loading ready run. That's it says right here. And this is ask LR. That's us. This is our Q and A panel, mm -hmm. which uh, against recommendation of PAX, um, in their little like fun tips for uh, you know how to run your panel. Uh, apparently, talking heads doing Q and A get the least engagement. But jokes on them. That's all we ever do at our PAX panels. <laughs> I was intending to just paint my entire body as like a talking face and wear a giant hat and then do that. But uh, oh. the last time I took off my shirt at a PAX, uh, I was told very sternly to never do it again. Is that a thing they used to do on Camp Caribou? Uh, no, that was the chin thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah but I thought they also did a torso thing. thing. Probably did a torso thing. Yeah, that was probably part of Canadian television at some point, I'm sure of it. Probably. Yeah. Could you imagine doing that and just, like, bringing the house down with laughter? <laughs> Do you know how far humor technology has advanced in the last 50 years? <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, I, I don't think Camp Caribou was, like, supposed to be on the vanguard of, of yeah. humor. It, it wasn't like the Smothers Brothers, no. <laughs> You have to be the right age of Canadian yeah. to appreciate Camp Caribou references. Yeah. Uh, before we get too into our Q&A, we solicited these questions uh, from all of you fine folks on Twitter. Uh, in, in case it comes up, because it might, this is actually our second recording uh, of this owing to a technical issue. And now you may think, oh, but would, you already answered all the questions. We're not getting the same sort of, you know, fresh off the cuff, loading ready run nonsense that we're used to. Worry not, because I assure you that we have completely forgotten everything that we said. <laughs> Whenever we do a podcast or a Q&A or a recording, we just fully brain dump everything that happened. Uh, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure we never talked yeah. about Camp Caribou last time. Yeah, no. no. I filed this all in the surprise to me folder. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is already a divergent timeline, um, so you know I think that I think we're safe from that point of view. Oh man, yeah. people are going to be know. pissed though because they're going to be like, no, no, we want to know what happened last one. Release nope. the Snyder nope. Cut. No, no, no. According to the rules, if this was supposed to happen, it did happen according to the great timeline. The sacred lizards, timeline. And there are no variants of us anywhere. That's right. That That's you can true. prove. That's Doctor true. Strange losing his mind. <laughs> Looking at the, That's what, true. the time that, stone. That was the technical one. error that happened to the other Q and A. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, also, in, in case it uh, comes up at some point, we are recording this in the midst of the heat dome. <laughs> Talking about a heat wave. Heat wave here in the Pacific Northwest, as much as what you call it in America, which statistically is most of you, we call it the West Coast. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's preposterously warm here today so if you hear any uh, loud motorcycles or buses that's because the windows are open and if you see us looking moist that's because we are it's mm -hmm. it technically reaches all the way to edmonton yeah really which is that over must a mountain suck. range like it's you gotta think about the this whole cap is over encompassing the rockies to go as far as edmonton that's that's over a mountain range i just read actually a cbc headline that uh Lytton, Poor Lytton, not the Pokemon, the town, it's spelled differently, uh, just achieved the hottest temperature ever recorded in Canada. Oh, no. Yeah. 46 degrees Celsius. Oh. I'm not translating that We're for Fahrenheit. One. Wow! Fair number so, one. Good Probably for Lytton. 110, 112? Probably 120. There? It's No, it's uh, 113 is 45, so it's got to be like 114, 115. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Look, there's no winners when it comes to heat like that. <laughs> On the, actually... No. In reference to summer camps, this actually reminds me of one time when we I was at a summer camp and we were in uh, like cabins that had heating in them. And, you know, you do the thing where you're like you're in you're in the cabins and then and then you go away for like two days on an actual like camping thing and right. then come back. And before we left, one of the people in the cabin turned the heat all the way up in the cabin. Oh, no. <laughs> and so, On purpose, I assume. It, yeah. And so when we got back, it was oh. kind of like this. It was basically like a little like sauna inside. Because it was like a wood Jesus. cabin. So it smelled quite nice. It's got yeah. nice kind of... <laughs> Why would... 
<laughs> Why did they do that? They'd have to suffer too. Drag some stones in from outside, have a Look, schwitz. I don't, they, how they, old are you? It was not well thought out as a plan. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm having a really hard time with this because now I'm thinking like if water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but that's uh-huh. that's also 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Am uh-huh. I correct? I believe I'm yes. correct. Yeah, that, I that sounds right. Fahrenheit. Then halfway to 100, 50 degrees Celsius should be half of 212, which should be 106 I... degrees Fahrenheit. But no, I've had a fever of 103. Oh, damn. It doesn't work You're that right. way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was right, thinking there's zeros the in the wrong place, too. You're right. Fahrenheit is a complete mess, and mm-hmm. we refuse to use it in Canada except for every time we cook. For some stupid reason. Or if, we, yeah. or if we live in a house and we haven't bothered changing the thermostat to something that makes more Why sense. Why are we here again? We had, oh, to ask questions, oh. answer questions, sorry. We had a thermostat in Celsius and it broke and we could only get a replacement in Fahrenheit and I'm so annoyed. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Paul, let's, give us the first question. We'll go around, uh, we'll go around uh, in a clockwise fashion reading them out. Metalupus asks, what parts of the tech you've figured out for pandemic remote broadcasting do you think will be most useful as you move forward and eventually go back to in-person filming? That was an excellent question the first time we read it. It's still a good question. I don't remember the answer. It's the same I think as the I last threw it to one. Paul, and the, I'm going to throw it to Paul again. Yeah. The, 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 the squares that you're seeing here are an aspect yeah. of the pandemic. So, you know, we've gone through... Uh, at least half a dozen sort of iterations of the, you know, how everyone connects. You know, we've tried uh, Google Hangouts and Zoom and Discord and a uh, system we're using now is something called uh, OBS Ninja or Video Ninja. Um, that uh, is a great way that allows us to pull in all the video and stuff. And uh, in terms and like, you know, it's we're, it's been an iterative process, right? You know, we... we kind of figure stuff out as we go. And so now that, you know, hopefully things are starting to open up, we've got it really figured out now. But uh, uh, in terms of stuff that... Finally. Yes, things that will be useful going even, you know, in in regular uh, setup. Uh, I think, like, there is aspects of this that we have learned that in some ways the remote setup actually works better for. Um, Jackbox games, for one. You know, yep. not having to put eight people all in a room, even when there isn't a danger of pandemic. It's just not pleasant to be in a very small room with eight people in a lot of cases. Yeah, Nothing yep. against the eight people that are playing Jackbox, but that's just how it is. A lot of CTS stuff that isn't a uh, that isn't driven by couch co-op. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, th- when that crops up again, we'll probably see that happening again. Like, I'd still like to... I, I would prefer to do Mario Party with four people in the same room yes. so that we yeah. can we can so we don't step on each other when we're swearing at one another you <laughs> yeah. know but uh <laughs> for stuff like Jackbox especially cuz then you know we want eight people then we can involve guests as well I love how we do Among Us I love the Among Us streams I think that they're really unique and I think that that's mm. awesome and so if we do any more of that yeah, um, I guess Among Us can't really be played with people in the same, like, if you play, like, you can't. No. Well, no you can yeah. see someone moving the controller and pushing mm. the vent button. <laughs> but the, um, uh, and, and it is the, the, this aspect of, like, being able, being able to bring in remote people is definitely, mm. like, that's super neat. I mean, for, for, even for, like, Dice Friends streams, uh, work better in, like, it's, it's nice to have people there in person, but silver lining of our current setup we've been able to uh have people join us who uh it would be very difficult to 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 get them coming in all the time and stuff you know we've had uh kiss and andy and michelle and anthony rap and you know all these people who Mm -hmm. we otherwise you know otherwise either wouldn't have been able to or only like if they happened to be in the area we could maybe get them in on one thing uh yeah yeah so that's been super. That's been super neat, um, and yeah. I anticipate that we will still be um, doing that on occasion for uh, for streams. Where uh, yeah, it's not something that we ever like prioritized before because there are so many of us that it's not. It's never been like strictly critical to be like, well, we need someone else. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, when we're already in a situation where we're all joining remotely, it's 
basically no extra work to be like, wait, what if we get someone from the other side of the continent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I mean, it's it's a uh, there is this thing like if you've ever had you know anybody watching has probably had uh, a a Skype or Zoom conversation where you have some people in the room and some people on the screen. And yeah. it's just, you know, it's just never, never a good experience for the people on the screen and stuff. Whereas in, I mean, we, we, Desert Bus was sort of like this too. Like it, uh, by having everybody remote, even when we're all in Victoria, when everybody is remote, it kind of evens the playing field for people in Victoria versus people in, uh, you know, whatever in on the east coast of america or in australia or wherever so yeah. that's kind of a fun aspect of it there's been a lot more um like i brought up zencaster uh at one point i think last time we answered this question too because yeah the aspect of being able to do a remote podcast or being able to handle mm -hmm. a lot of remote recordings like uh we have done some remote recordings through zencaster or we've done a lot of them actually through zencaster and i think there's a there's a value there in being like this it's actually a pretty good way if you have good audio setups for everybody at home to be able to allow people to record lines on their own in another location as long as we can like you know control for background noise and stuff that's super handy mm -hmm. and i think there was a larger point brought up about the video broadcast or the video production uh, uh workflow and tool chain Oh, right. Yeah. Bit, yeah. Um, you yeah. were going to say. Well, I was going to say, this is, I never got a chance to say this last time. So the timelines truly have diverged. <laughs> Jumping on Zencaster, one of the things we started doing during the pandemic was punt counter punt, mm. which is pet, which is content that is, oh, there's loud truck. Why? This it's content that is unlike anything we've ever done before is as I designed it specifically to take advantage of being all remote. So yeah. it's, it's like only pandemic recording it's like yeah it's like heavily edited improv yeah you would not know from listening to it how heavily edited it is it's great. and so you've been like how are we going to do this in person yeah maybe we just keep doing it the way we've been doing it i'm yeah. not sure and yeah you don't you don't yeah. have to go back to doing everything in person and even the things that we do like i know uh uh, I, I know you're desperately all waiting to be able to play those decks where you can steal each other's magic cards <laughs> across the table properly and and flick them into the microphone. But um, with uh, with arena the the arena setups we've done and even some of the the camera top down camera commanders that doesn't mean that at some point in the future if it's more viable or a better thing to do that you can do that one night. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um... Beach mentioned the editing workflow. We've been using Dropbox massively for everything, which is great because it means that someone can, because we've still been using the Moonbase a little bit, but it means that like Matt can go into the Moonbase and edit something and then finish the, and then and then be like, I'm done. And then me at home can go, great, let me open that and take a look at it. And that's, that's been nice. And we tried so other, I miss the office. We tried other solutions as well yeah. uh, while, while the pandemic was going on. And it was like, the, the, where we landed on was that for what we're doing and how we want to evaluate this and how we do most of our work in the office anyway, our Dropbox solution is a really usable solution yeah. and paying a lot of extra money for another system is maybe not what we want to do. And I mean, just- We already have Dropbox. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, it's just one thing that has happened, I think with everybody with with the pandemic is is because there's so much less kind of incidental face-to-face -face communication you know two people happen to be in the office and like oh hey i wanted to mention blah 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 you know i think our general sort of communication and process workflow um has had to get more streamlined and more yeah. um mm. more sort of codified which is not a bad thing <clears throat> like that's that's actually something that we probably should have done anyway but this has sort of forced us to do it yeah. Uh, next question. Yeah. Kathleen. How, it, what is the new thing that you bought for yourself that you really like? I'll add my own. That was Costa. 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 How, how, how you bought, what is the thing that you bought and how do you like it? Yeah. 
Oh, I got some hair stuff. It's called hair balm. That's what it's called. And it, like, it works okay. I don't know. I hate my hair right now. Every time I look in the mirror, it's just agony. It's like two knives into my soul. One for each eye. Jesus. <laughs> What's that like? Hot goth summer. Ugh. Anyhow, Cameron, what have you bought? I'm buying a haircut in about a week. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for nice. you. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be incredible. Um, what have I bought that I really like? I bought this um, Ahab, uh, uh, Noodler's Ahab Flex Nib Demonstrator Pen. Demonstrator, which means it's clear. So you can watch the ink flow. It Is it just called a demonstrator? Because it's like, let me demonstrate how the ink moves. Yes. Yes, basically. Oh, okay. um, and it has, like, usually flexible nibs have to be made out of, like, you know, gold, right? Ah. Uh, because cheap Damn. nibs are made out of steel. But if you just split the nib way too far down, um, then you can also get some incidental flex out of a cheap steel nib. And that's what oh. this does. And I kind of like it. Cool. You lose a lot of control. But um, you get a lot of like organic line weight in your writing. Oh, cool! And it it looks nice. It's pleasant. Um, and it was cheap, so that's good. Cameron, have you Wait, ever? You... Oh, sorry. Have you ever considered <clears throat> doing a show where you just review fountain pens? There are other channels that do that really well, and yeah, but... I would just be kind of like a dilettante in it. <laughs> I. I feel like the I feel like that's an area where it's when like the fountain pen review uh, community is mm. probably mm. much both both larger and deeper than you probably than you can imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah, like the fountain pen community is like you know I got this nice little pen. It's only about six hundred dollars, um, but you know it's okay. I might right? throw it in my car. Yeah. My everyday right, like you carry. Can, there are some fountain pen people out there. There's some serious <laughs> pockets of humanity that exist <laughs> around these. And they are particular. <laughs> I just things. I just want to I just want to confirm for the edification of the viewers once again that you bought that one because it's called the Ahab, right? Yes. Well, okay. I mean, it was a it was a factor. It was a factor. <laughs> I'm guessing just, the like the line weight thing is largely because it's like if you want precision, get a pilot. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Like if you're going to be creating, I don't know, um, print quality diagrams for a scientific paper, right? You do that in drafting, but yeah. handwriting is kind of like this archaic thing almost at this point that isn't used a, for a lot of purposes. It has this like very pleasant aesthetic quality to it right yeah. um like we 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 hand write out grocery lists sometimes right if you don't like write it in your phone on a note app i'm trying to think of like when the common times are that you actually need to take out a pen and write something down a check uh, a check phone yeah. number People, phone. I mean, people have given me shit about my handwriting for all my life, and I just like the idea that now I can say, no, no, you don't understand. It's organic. It's as bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you I can't write it, honestly. <laughs> my, yeah. my biggest use of pens and pencils these days is I have several uh, small pieces of paper in front of my desk on, on with things like this. You probably can't. Just basically, it looks like just like hieroglyphic squiggles. Because there's things I'm writing yeah. down while trying to solve puzzles and video games. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. That... Right. Uh, that is also one of my use cases where I write down the gear I'm chasing that season in Destiny. Oh, I've seen I've seen you tweet those, and it's like it's it's amazing to me. But see, yeah, yeah. that that my, that my is notepad. so no, that's no, that's such a nice gear list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, <laughs> It feels good to cross something off of it. Okay, hold on. I want to show off too. This is this is. Uh, I've spilled some water on it, but this is my notepad. See if you can decipher what that means. Uh, there's a calendar. Nope. I know. Ooh. I know what that is. You oh. showed me. Oh, is it some sort of cipher that you're? 
Six no, no, no I'm this. This is this is my editing plan to make sure that those pack opening editing videos I put together for um, the PPRs are, are equitable. So there's uh, counting how many times people show up in pack one, pack two, pack three, and then pack six. And what it is is two to three always get smushed together, and three to four always get smushed together. Mm. Uh, this is so everybody gets a roughly equal amount of screen time. And I stopped doing it for six because just everybody gets in. But it's really helpful for the first packs to make sure that, you know, everybody gets a through line, but they don't, you know, overpower. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I still bullet journal and I do it all in pen and marker sometimes because colors are fun. Right. Well, like handwriting mm. has, um, I retain things better when I write them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like I found it in school. I could take notes um, and I would retain it a lot more easily if I, um, my studying for classes would be taking my handwritten notes and then reinterpreting them and deliberately rephrasing them in a text document. Mm -hmm. Cool. So there, there's a kinetic quality to it that might help some people retain information. Nice. Right, which I'm... is, I think, a lot of what bullet journaling, journaling is about, too, right? Mm -hmm. Like being deliberate and um, uh, deliberate. Sometimes there's just one word, Cameron. That <laughs> systematic, I think, is yeah. the other yeah. word you're thinking of, though. Yeah. Yes, d systematic, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think when you're, when you're typing, you can type so fast that you can basically sort of follow along. At least I, I can, I'm a pretty mm. fast typist. And even in university I was. Um, but then you're concentrating so much on getting the words that you're missing the meaning, but there's no way that you can write along as fast as someone talks just cause like handwriting is slower. And I probably wrote a lot faster when I was in university. So that means you have to basically sit there, actively listen, and then only point out the most important parts of what is being said because you can't verbatim copy. Oh, no, right? that's what shorthand's for. And mm -hmm. it's really easy to move it's e really easy when you're handwriting things to be like, oh, this is a digression, so I can like move this to side and draw a little box around it for like my notes and stuff like that, or, or like start like a point form list. Whereas that kind of formatting is really irritating to do on the computer, I find. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, what'd you get yourself? I was gonna oh, say, yeah. yeah, what'd you buy? Uh, I mean, most of my stuff, like in terms of like purchases and stuff, at least recent purchases, you know, in the last little while. It's been like technology stuff, um, mm. but I mean, I've been pretty happy with like this microphone that I have, uh, Shure MV7, hashtag not sponsored, but it seems to work well. And it's certainly- Open to the possibility. It's an, up, us. It's an upgrade uh, in, it's an upgrade from what I had previously, both that it's a better microphone and also it's not like sitting on my desk. So, which means that I can like use my computer while I have, before my microphone was like, was like sitting on a tripod that was like mounted over my keyboard. So I couldn't really type while I had the microphone out. So Oof. now it's on like a little alarm and everything. So it's nice. Uh, I mean, and as part of that, like, as I said, you know, with the technology stuff, it's been adapting over time. And the setup I have here, which you can't see because it's on the other side of this camera, is uh, I feel like I've got a pretty good setup going on here four different monitors and two different computers and various other ridiculous pieces of technology. And you uh, wonder why your house is so hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that represent uh, what I've started to call Studio P, uh, to go with Studio A and B and C at the office. Yeah. Uh, I Theoretically, some of that will be dismantled once... There's less, less need for Studio P, but uh, uh, it is, I have, yeah, it's, it's uh, nice to sort of get things in a way that happy with how they, how they are working. Mm -hmm. um, the, the nice thing too, is that when you, when we were getting Studio P put together, you were able to, I think you get a computer that could do everything you needed to do back before we started to not be able to buy computer parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't have, I don't have like the newest graphics card, but there's a 20, there's a 2000 series NVIDIA card in here. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, 
that we got this computer at the time when you could get computer parts, but no microphones or uh, webcams cam- or webcams. But you could get yeah. other computer yeah. parts. Now you yes. can get microphones, and webcams. You just can't get, uh, you know, graphic cards or processors. Beach, what'd you buy? I bought a knife. <laughs> Great, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for one of you to go no <laughs> that's fine too no i just it was too perfect i not everything please has tell me good... please tell me about your sharp object a good knife uh, is good it is yeah. yeah buying a good knife is really good and i um I, I bought a mac mth 80 let's try that again i bought a mac mth 80 which is wire cutter's favorite chef's knife um, it's also the, the nice thing is not just theirs. It's the favorite chef's knife. To a lot of other uh, groups like Epicurious, I think did a review and like a few other people have done reviews and they kind of like, yes, this is our favorite chef's knife. If you like a Japanese knife, if you like a German knife, there's a Wusthof that you might want to get. If you like a, a cheaper knife, there's a Victorinox. I was like, I want to try a Japanese knife. Uh, so I, I went online and found a vendor in Victoria a, it's an online oh, store. Right. Yeah. There's a guy in Victoria who sells knives. He lives in like Brentwood Bay or whatever, like on the, on, on like the outside of town. Like you, you basically have to drive through like forests to find him essentially. And I'm like, that makes sense. That's where a knife guy yeah. should live is in a forest. I remember this because we were filming Checkpoint. Yeah. And you got the notification that he was personally going to bring it to your home because he offered and i was like well i could pay for shipping but he was like ah just i'll come to town you live i know where you live i have your address for delivery so i'll just drive it to your house and so i was like just oh, casually shit. Well, mentions that he knows where you I, live i think First heather's at home so i just text heather like there's a man coming to our door with a knife please take it but also please text me back a few minutes after he leaves so i know it's not in your chest <laughs> the yeah, knife that is true the knife should be in some sort of carrying thing. It shouldn't be like, <laughs> out, like he shouldn't be like brandishing the knife. Yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah, I oh, have a man to come to our house with a knife. Yeah. 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 And now you I need to see that. Now I need a sharpener for it. So I'm going to have to get a sharpener at some point too. Cause... Like a, like a whetstone? Well, there's a tool <laughs> you can get. And, and a lot of people like say, oh, the tools are my yeah, I've they heard do that, say that. I've heard yeah. people say that. Yeah. But this is the this is a tool that the guy sells on the site. It's made, I believe, by Mac, and it's made for their this this level of knives. And this is the professional series knife, right? And it's like they're like, this is a tool you can use to to sharpen your knife if you're not honing it regularly or sharpening on a whetstone or whatever. I'm like, I know that I'm gonna f it up if I try to do it myself. So I'd rather just buy the thing that has everything in the right thing and do ten pulls and be like, okay, it's back in working order again. Maybe someday I'll find a person who on a bicycle with a with a with a pedal driven grinder who can no. like ride by your house and sharpen your knives for you. That won't happen here. I, ah. I want to pay like thing? sixty baht and I want a guy to draw. This is the thing they do in Thailand. This is a guy who I, like does it. He does you have a very city precise and vision knives, so. of what yeah. this knife sharpener is going to look like. I like yeah, it. Yeah, you know, he's in like a jean bay and he's got like, he's like an old wizened man and he's riding up. I mean, he's got to ride up Johnson Street and stuff. Like that's that's a bit of a distance, but you know, he's coming from downtown. So oh, it's Lord. a long run too, but whatever. It could be yep. like professional knife sharpeners. Like, okay, I can sharpen your knife for 20 bucks or I can do the riding the bike thing for a hundred bucks. Yeah. But mm. I have to like go go back and get my outfit and get all yeah. that stuff. You exactly. Know, and do, the riding the bike because... do the riding the bike thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's what I want, right? But yeah, yeah. we'll see if I get it. He- Heather? I don't want to meet your bike man. I do not send me texts about your bike man. <laughs> I, I bought um, uh, a snack box subscription oh. for uh, a company called Boxu, which is... Ah, uh, yes. I've uh, heard of Boxu. Spelt with a bunch of K's. Yep, it would be. Because it's the pronunciation. Because they don't have X's in Japanese. Nope. <laughs> nope. And it's a, yeah, it's a Japanese snack Well, box. I mean, Hunter x Hunter, but that's not really the thing. That's, that's Sorry. Not keep, that's not an X. Here, you talk about Boxu now. Okay, I'm going to just um, go. <laughs> is that why he got a Japanese knife? Is because he's a huge weeb? Yes. Is that why you bought Japanese snacks? Because yes. you're a huge weeb? Yes. I wasn't going to ever deny that. Why would I deny that? 
you we live together yeah sometimes she shares the snacks with me that come from boxu which is the thing Lucky. she subscribed to <laughs> it's a free now, so i've been subscribed to a snack box subscription before for another set of japanese snacks that was fancier than say the tokyo treat one but they stopped being able to ship during the pandemic and then i also had like braces for a while so i wasn't buying a snack mm. box it was too much of a risk of things that i can't actually eat but i can yeah and that's not good for me so uh i tried out boxu yeah. cuz uh i was talking with uh the the uh some friends about like different snack boxes and this one has um a lot of different snacks that they they tell you what area of the country they come from oh, yeah. they let you oh, know nice. what the allergens are uh inside or at least the most common ones so if fish allergies and stuff you can't like swap anything out they won't let you do that most subscriptions won't but it has a very nice pamphlet that it has uh, like a flavor profile for everything yeah, flavor and, profiles and, and when you um, subscribe the first time you get their starter box and then you get their seasonal boxes every yeah so the very first time you subscribe you get the uh you 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 get a uh assortment that basically everybody gets for the first time they subscribe and then after that you'll get the the monthly box which always varies yeah. yes that is how they work yeah my, uh, they much give as, you a bunch of good stuff so you don't cancel immediately it's like much as i like uh and i uh, you know interesting japanese candy i feel like a flavor profile thing for each of the candy would be very used sometimes it's not that it's like not good it's just surprising yeah. <laughs> well some of them are basically pastries yeah as well, mm -hmm. like, and then you get like mochi and, uh, or, uh, Tokyo Treat. The, the fun thing about getting Tokyo Treat is you get the weird flavored Kit Kat once a month that you're like, ah, yes, something different. They don't, they don't do the packaged goods for this in that way. Yeah, these are all, these are all like wagashi. They're the fancier kind of traditional Japanese snacks more oh, often than not. Most of them. They yeah. do sometimes still give you like the shrimp too crackers yeah, some and, and, and stuff and whatever like that. but the box is well yeah, i packed. love shrimp crackers i know right it's such a hard time finding them the other day but it's fun too because sometimes you'll just walk over to me and you'll be like here and you'll hand me a package that is already opened that has so, half of something in it and i'll be like great no, no, and i just eat it there's two different ways this happens the <laughs> one beach has described where i try a thing and i'm like nope not for heather this is for beach yeah <laughs> and then there's the other way which is box. like um, sometimes they'll give you like two or three of the same like cookie thing and I'll eat it and be like, all right, I want Beach to experience this so that I can talk to him about this properly. Mm. So I will be nice this time and he can have the one that I like. But the great thing so is, is I never know which one it is when she brings it to me. <laughs> I don't know if she liked it or not. <laughs> That'd be tough. So it's like a true blind taste test because she doesn't even tell me what it is. I just, ah, oh, free thing. Ah! I offer, yeah. I, but you never want to know. No, never really want to know. It's, you're right. Is that <laughs> trust? <laughs> yeah, I think sure. so. Sure. Yeah. How about you, Graham? Uh, I recently bought myself a bunch of comedy. Um, I, uh, I I found that there was a. I don't remember if I told this story on this last time we recorded it or somewhere else, but you get to hear it again, my friends. Um, uh, there's a old. Uh, there's a BBC radio show from the 1960s called Round the Horn which was a formative comedy experience for me because my mom listened to it when she was a kid uh, on Sunday afternoons. She said she had a little, a small concealable like FM radio with like the one ear piece. And she'd be like cackling at the Sunday dinner table, um, much to the, much to the chagrin of her parents. Wow. Oh yeah. Your mom yeah, was yeah. a badass. Yeah. Uh, and the, uh, we got cassette tapes of it um, when I was when I was a kid, and so we'd have like afternoon tea, her and I listening to these old tapes of Round the Horn, and uh, it was written by Barry Took, who uh, would go on to form Monty Python. He wasn't actually part of it, but he was he was like a BBC producer, and he'd be like, "You guys and you guys form a comedy troupe." Right. Yeah. Uh, so it was written by him and Marty Feldman who's the sort of like bug eyed guy who played Igor in young Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's a, it's a really funny show. Not all the jokes hold up. Um, the, the ones that do are very funny, but anyway, uh, I recently discovered that all the original recordings are on available on Apple, but Apple only recently started 
allowing people to charge money for podcasts. I don't even know if that's been rolled out yet, but they've announced that they're no, adding the thing where you can charge yeah, for podcasts. Yeah, it's in process, yeah. So the way that they sold this, the way the BBC sold these recordings was they classified them as an audio book because you could sell audio books on Apple. So there's four seasons. It's like 10 bucks for a season of like 17 half hour episodes. It's really good. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but what it means is that uh, I've been listening to it and my phone has been going like, good for you for reading. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on hitting your reading goals. <laughs> And I'm just like, that's not what I'm doing. I'm listening to like <laughs> even listening. really stupid jokes. <laughs> uh, it's probably set like, you know, with the same as, as like the like the watch thing where it's like, you read one page. Good job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, I, I listened to like a half hour episode of madcap goofball uh, comedy from the 1960s. And my phone is like, oh, so much reading. Mm -hmm. Look at this smart boy. <laughs> So, but I've been very much enjoying revisiting those uh, and, and, and hearing a bunch of stuff that I haven't heard because the, the cassettes were only like, you know, the very best episodes. And there's oh, yeah. a bunch of stuff that I've, I've never heard, including all, like the, all the not good like episodes. two or three. Yeah. <laughs> but also the like two or three minutes of show that they edited out to fit on the cassettes because the uh -huh. cassettes were only half yeah, an yeah. hour. And right. It turns out there's like individual lines or like little moments that were edited out to trim it down from like. 32 and a half minutes which means you've done that thing where you've been mouthing along with what it is that they're doing and all of a sudden there's a new bit that's in there like wait no no do it like it's on the record do it like it's on the record i've done exactly that yes. <laughs> i was like um, what what what's going on what timeline am i in anyway that's... speaking of this timeline uh, camera's sure turn i think was it yeah. yeah yeah it is do you have any special plans for Lur's 20th anniversary in 2023? Do you? Well, that's like Cameron? six or seven years off. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. We, we well. have, uh, every month, uh, we have a, uh, a meeting, you know, in the last sort of, uh, the second to last week of the month or so, yeah. uh, to plan the next month's worth of, you know, to, to lock in all this, what we're going to be playing on streams and, any special events that might be happening during the month and that kind of stuff. Um, and that's like, I consider that to be like, that's a big improvement over what we were, what we were doing before, <laughs> but that's, which was nothing, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's like looking a month ahead. Uh, yeah. It were, yeah, who knows what could that's be happening in 2023. Good yeah. job looking a month uh, ahead. So us. about September of 2023 is roughly when we'll figure that out. Yeah. yeah. We'll be like, Maybe. oh yeah, we should if we remember. I want to yeah. give the same answer I gave last time, but now I feel like I shouldn't. No, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. Do right. the variant. Yeah. <laughs> don't be don't be withholden to the alternate timeline. Yeah. It's fair, right? It so got deleted for a reason. It's, it's fine. It's true. It's yeah, yeah. The fact is that we don't it could like we could make a special play mat. Like, <laughs> and so what? Like, what does that actually mean? Like, it's, it's 2021. We will know more about what happens for all that stuff yeah. when we get closer to the time, obviously. I mean, the I, answer to the question, purely the answer to the question is no. Yeah. We um, currently I have, do I not. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. I have a thought. Yeah. If Lur's 20th anniversary is in 2023. Which is baffling to me, but yes. That means this year... Lur should have graduated high school and we missed it. We missed our own yeah. high school Mo graduation. Most people oh, miss yeah. their own high school yeah, graduations we, this year. It's we, okay. We were home for our high school oh, grad. That, yeah. That's yeah. true. Maybe yeah, we were grad got canceled. Yeah. We got held back. I, I, I would <laughs> say, even if our answer was yes, that would be all you'd get. Yeah. We got to go back and do some of those like, uh, like AP courses or something. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Or oh, we're in Ontario, inexplicably, grade 13. <laughs> Although that that was retired, like... I want to say 10 years ago, Cameron. We, yeah. we were talking the other day to someone who moved from Ontario, uh, just as sort of that was being phased out. And it was like, it was weird. This is... Uh, this is marginally relevant to anything, but, it, but so they used to have grade 13 and when they phased it out, what they did was it's like, if you just want to graduate high school, you get to grade 12, you're done. You're out of, you're out of high school. No problem. But if you want to go to university, you got to do more high school. See, there's, there's no grade 13. 
we've eliminated grade 13. But if you want to go to university, you're going back to high school for more courses now, to be able to get into university. In Alberta, what we had was if, if you want to if you want to go to university, then, you know, you can finish grade 12. But if you just want to be done, get the fuck out. It's in grade 10. It's like you can go now. Just. Yeah, Why? that's not that's not finishing high school that's, though. Well, that's as far as they're a... concerned, it was like you could you were allowed to finish high school after like grade nine or grade ten or whatever. It's like you can just fuck. No, off. no, it's, it's still not technically finishing though. What? I, yeah. That's a thing. That's a thing. Grade ten. That's where they'd stop forcing people to go to high school. My high school yes. in Prince George. Yeah. Can you, do you get a diploma? No, but they'll no. just let you leave. They it's just enough. don't care anymore. They, yeah. they, they, they like, don't feel to... socially obligated. They, well, when I went to vocational high school as well, and so they were like, "If you're if you're done with high school, you still have to take some high school stuff." But have you thought about auto body? Like, I mean, they try to push you into another location to let yeah. you do stuff for a little while. Yeah, uh, you don't. You all you need to work at the sawmill is grade ten. Yeah. Could you, could you just right? could you just not come back? <laughs> don't want to be fucking here we don't want you to be fucking here like yeah. christ no I'm, i mean when i was in school actually all the teachers and principals and concerts and everybody were all like we all want you to stick around until grade 12 all of you please just stick around until yeah. grade 12 i'm like that's good of you but you also you know you you know we could just leave and they're like yeah we know you don't really want to do that like take a year off after grade 10 though because i think it's really hard oh. to actually go back i don't think they want you back at that point like, uh, do, doing, it's, doing it's do or die doing your like I'm gonna go to Europe for a year, like in grade, like after grade after grade ten. Doesn't I would have been well. for it. <laughs> God, my grade ten was crap. I would have ended up like being trafficked <laughs> <laughs> if I did something like that. That's what would have happened to me. You become a drug mule in Serbia. Yeah, probably. Oh my goodness, mm. uh, Paul. Uh, what take take us to the next question. <laughs> Uh, uh, is there any of oh, your good. older content that you feel hasn't aged well? Oh, are four there, seconds ago. Yeah, are there earlier yes. parts of this particular thing? Yeah. Uh, how do you approach learning from your mistakes? I mean, this is... This is... I mean, this is actually, you know, kind of a serious question, but... Yeah. Uh, and there's certainly... There are... Um, I, th I, I would sort of put things in, like, two categories. Like, there's stuff that... Um, because we were, you know, younger, we've been doing this for a long time. Made jokes that uh, we probably wouldn't make now because mm -hmm. we're more mature and we, yeah, well, we're older anyway. I don't know about more yeah. mature, <laughs> but you know, we and we yeah, have later, more, let's not go more and more far. experience. You know, we 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 yeah. have experienced more different things, and it's like, oh, maybe we shouldn't make fun of that because now we actually know about it. Um, there are also. Um, Content that doesn't age well just because uh, stuff has happened in the meantime. You know, mm. like, I'm sure we've made jokes about diseases and stuff, yeah. uh, which obviously we wouldn't make anymore, or at yeah. least not right now. I mean, like, I, I remember there was a joke in the um, slacking for gold video, which was like Olympic oh, yeah, level yeah. slacking. Yeah, There was supposed to be a... Um, uh, like a uh, cold open or like an intro to it that you know you do the thing where it's like da 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 da. Here's some other stuff, and now slacking like for gold. Like it was going to be like just a little thing, a little throwaway joke at the beginning that I wrote that was um the uh biathlon luge contest, <laughs> which biathlon is right. skiing while shooting. Uh, <laughs> And like people died during the bike because they're they're on the luge and shooting a gun, and it it just seemed like a funny thing. That year, somebody tragically died during doing the luge, and so it was like, uh, damn, they it. got shot. It's still a good no, <laughs> no, it's they like, flew. This was yeah. in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. That was a. It's like it's yeah. a good joke, but not in the context that it <laughs> currently is. So we didn't put that. Yeah. In. yeah. So, I mean, this, it's funny you asked about the 20th anniversary because at the 15th anniversary stream that we did, mm. we watched a bunch of our old content. And there were like two, maybe three jokes in there that we were like, yeah, well, that we did make that joke and we don't stand behind it, but it, we made it, you know. So, I, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of like learning from our mistakes, it's just, I mean, it's just listening. It's accepting that it's, I mean, mistake 
again, is a variable term there. Like, I don't know that they were all necessarily mistakes, but acknowledging simply that it's like, that it is something that a joke that we wouldn't make now. Yeah. Right. I, just listening and acknowledging that I think is the most important way and easiest mm -hmm. way to I, do that. Being open yeah. <laughs> to I, the, no the notion. I, I like that, you know, we haven't, I mean, I, I, think i like that we haven't had we haven't like taken stuff down because we're mm -hmm. so you know embarrassed by it now um i do all our embarrassing stuff is pretty much up there for people to see um yeah and, and i and i think that's like i think you can it's okay to see it as an evolution of sorts you know uh i i do live with a little compressed diamond of fear in my in my gut where I keep thinking about like the only reason we're able to do what we do is not because we have big Hollywood producers behind us who are saying, "Hey, don't worry, do what do we, do your do your stupid jackass shit. We're gonna make sure you're gonna be funded, you're, or you guys got lots of money behind you, and you've got connections, and you got whatever." Right? It's like the reason we're able to do what we're doing is because the audience, the presence of the audience, and the demographic makeup of our audience, which we are very like aware of, helps keep us honest. And knowing yeah. that it's like we, as we've seen more and more people show up who are part of uh, different minorities and, and different marginalized groups, that it's just kind of like, yeah, we need to, we need to always kind of have that, you know, living there that's helping to inform whatever it is we're going to be doing. And that's tough because I don't live that life that a lot of our audience lives. And so it's hard for me to, to know. So it's like, I got to try to be careful all the time. Well, mm -hmm. it's just, and it's, it's important to be careful. It's, it's about being aware and having other people like listening to when other people point out things to you like we mm -hmm. we've we've shot certain things where after i've watched them and like hey do you think this maybe does this and then we'll actually maybe show it to a mod or someone that we know who's within that community to see to double check that if if maybe we're going past a line we've done that yeah like mm -hmm. the thing i've the thing I, I i thought the other day was like i guess if you were watching some of our older material and you saw something that you're kind of like, oh, that's a real like boner of a joke to have made, right? Not a joke about a boner, obviously. I think we've made a few of those, but... Those are totally probably, probably, like us. We Good. probably won't There's stop. a lot of guys in this group, so it probably has come up. So, yeah. But it's like the real just kind of like, oh, that was terrible. And that's not the kind of thing I thought you people were. Uh, I might probably isn't. Yeah. And that's the thing is I'm like, look at the date it was published. Then look at the people we are now. And then ask yourself too. It's like, do you think that these are the kind of people now that would continue to make that kind of joke from then? Would they make that joke now? And hopefully we're showing you that we're learning all the time and trying to be better about stuff. And we want you to keep us honest. Yeah, definitely. Uh, on that B, do you want to take the next question? Oh, sure. Yes. What is it? If you could get the quote new player experience for any game back, what game would you choose? Mine would be Dark Souls 3. Oh, good, Andrew Reed. Uh, okay, so I just recently played Betrayal at Crondor on um, Play It right. Forward, and that was great. And But that also informed a, uh, a reaction from me because I was like, this is a game I played when I was 17 for the first time. And then I tried playing it again when I was in my like late 20s, early 30s. And then I finally actually played it again now that I'm in my early 40s. And I'm like, so I've had three chances at playing this game, but never completed it. I kind of started it and played a bit, started and played a little bit further, started and actually completed it. And I realized that at all three of those times, I was a different person each time. And, and never felt like, even though I was playing new parts of the game now, I wasn't getting the new player experience that I was getting back when I was 17 in my buddy Brian's den, and we were playing it until like three in the morning and scarfing down peanut M&Ms and getting sick to our oh, stomachs. Yeah. You know, like that was the thing, right? And it's like, that was, it's like that, it's when everyone talks about, I want to recapture the experience. It's like, you can't recapture that experience because I can't, I couldn't be 41 years old and then remembering like, and feeling 17 again when I'm playing through chapter seven of this game that I've never made to chapter seven before. I was not having that experience. And so I'm like, harder, for, I thought that would be the game and it isn't. The game for me, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's the one where if you hit me on the head and I lost all my memories of that game, it would be an exciting experience for me to be able to experience that because I've been informed of all the Zelda I had played up until that point 
And then this very new experience on what Zelda is like, which I did not expect. I had a lot mm. of fun with Zelda Breath of the Wild. Heather. Uh, for me, it would be it would be Hollow Knight. I it's a oh. uh, uh, very. I've, I've played some Metroidvanias, but I don't. I, the the genre itself doesn't ever really grab me. I'm constantly annoyed about having to go back places, but. The, that, that, the, that would the, be a detriment to the whole. Thing. What? <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 little bug that you you are in the tiny space and the atmosphere and the fact that the game starts off with you kind of just going places and seeing strange things and uh, feeling like oh I do want to see things and uh, I I really love the the map mechanic of you have to go purchase map making tools and then sit down on a bench so you can and all the stuff for the map that you've actually seen yeah, yeah, yeah. and i know not everyone is a fan of that but i'm like but it's so cute i am a <laughs> tiny bug and and it's a very hard game that i also enjoy playing mechanically but uh by to what, get, I, to what, I, again, what i'd want again was just the look at this really dark world but look at how pretty it is and how everything keeps kind of changing and and that mystery of like why are the other bugs so mean to me <laughs> I mean, you are stabbing them with like a big long stick. They are mean nail. to me before I hit them with the nail That's most true. of the time. Yeah. I I tried. There was a there was an area I came in upon the game where there was like a house that I went into and I talked to uh, I can't remember maybe it's Quirrell or or someone right. and they're like oh that 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 gentleman outside seems like he might not be too nice and I'm like oh but he's just standing there looking out on the water like oh well maybe he'll talk to me and he does not he just attacks you and just like no not my friend <laughs> I literally just remembered my answer to this from last time See, you gave yeah. you all the time you needed I've been racking my brain because it's not like I imagine some people might think it might be like Final Fantasy 7 or something and it's it's not because I it's sort of similar to what you were saying Beach like that's not like the the, there's aspects to that that are not just the new player experience that yeah. don't really like just playing that game from the beginning again doesn't really do the same thing and I don't even like necessarily play a lot of RPGs today right uh, so it's not just JRPGs it's that game specifically um, so uh, it, it's, it's probably Castlevania Symphony of the Night because Ooh, yeah, yeah. you get to do all the exploration and stuff like assuming we're not looking at a guidebook here you know all the exploration is just super fun. Metroidvanias in general, I still really enjoy. I'm excited to check out Dread. Um, and then you like the, the Metroid and the Vania, exactly. Uh, and then the the just the the wild aspect of that game where there's a whole second ass game, right? <laughs> like what what a surprise, yeah. right? That 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 would be really awesome. Because yeah, that that game is just has a lot of great discovery in it. I confess I was worried you were going to say, my pick is going to be Candy Crush Saga. <laughs> I'm glad that would to, be... go, to go back and play Angry Birds again. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess having that, that game that, because there's always that, that, that game that the first time you play where it has that twist that you've never seen before because you just haven't mm. been exposed to it. Oh, man. Yeah, actually, the first Bioshock for that, that would be pretty cool. Mm. Mm. That was kind of mind blowing. I mean, even in the moment, it was mind blowing for like twenty minutes, and then they didn't like do anything with it. White <laughs> stick the landing. It was like on that particular oh, man, twist. That's so. Wait, but oh, okay. yeah, sort of undercut themselves a little bit there. But that was still cool. Still neat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm changing my answer because I was like not super pleased with it last time. Oh, but I have a clarification to the question. Yeah. Is this is this a new player experience now? But I am old and smart and jaded and in my late 30s? Or is this the new player experience when I was a young boob who didn't it's, know shit? I think, I think it's, it's now. now. Like, I now. think it's, yeah. I think it's oh. if you forgot, if you, if you, you know, had that section of your brain removed. Yeah. So many games I loved when I was a youth that I just wouldn't put up with that kind of bullshit from, though. <laughs> like, I loved Zeno Gears <laughs> when I was a teenager, but holy shit. Wouldn't play that now. I'd be like, what? The second disc is just talking? Who's got time for that? I don't care. What do you mean there's no autosave? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna completely change my answer based on that. Uh, and I'm going to say the role-playing game Paranoia. 
Oh, oh hey, yeah. Oh. That's great. What a good answer. I, hmm. I mean, in some ways, like every every uh, uh, game of Paranoia could be a new like experience. Like you're not obviously going through the same uh, uh, the same scenario each time. Yeah, but the whole paranoia lore around the world, I specifically went in, I was like, I didn't like read any background on it because I'm lazy and, and, and it's fine. Know. And so I just like discovering what the hell was going on in the world was so surprising to me hmm, and neat. so delightful. Cool. And I like that. just how that whole thing was set up. It's very fun. Neat. Uh, Cameron. I mean, like my new player experiences are rarely very good because I harbor the delusion that I'm good at video games. And when you play a video ah. game for the first time, you're terrible at it, mm. right? right? And I constantly like restart things and wipe saves and like try to optimize my builds right from the beginning. And that's kind of how I like to roll, right? I like to try to play flawlessly because there's something wrong with me. So, and so the new player experience is not actually what you're looking for. Yeah, but like if I could retain that ability, <laughs> that yeah. knowledge and then just go back and then play through it flawlessly from like get go, mm. that would be pretty cool. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, like, that would be I don't cool. know, I'm just amazing at Dark Souls. I can't understand. <laughs> yeah, but like I don't know. I'm, I've been trying to think of like classic games that actually like had quite a large impact on me, um, that had interesting revelations and a satisfying like narrative buildup, and which one of them I would put up with now, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I've tried to go back and play Alpha Centauri again, which has this really wonderful story to it. Alpha Centauri, if you're not familiar with it, is kind of the spiritual sequel to Civilization II wherein mm. Civilization II ends with you sending like an expedition out into space to colonize right. Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is the game about that expedition and it uses basically the same game engine. And it is not playable. It's no fun anymore. <laughs> like <laughs> those games have come really far in the last 25 years, it's... really far. Um, that being said, Alpha Centauri's like very slow burn and it's philosophizing about what makes um, a society worth propagating and worth living in is great, right? And what what knowledge makes us human mm. uh, is is fascinating. And the slow integration of your society into there's a moth the size of a softball in my home. <laughs> I'm gonna guess then that that it's like that the the big twist for you is you just don't want to you don't want to be in a situation where you're going to lose knowledge because you like to enjoy the revelations and the knowledge that you're gained and if you had lost that knowledge exactly. and you went back and you played that game you'd be like this shit's just a rip off of what's other series I've been reading yeah right yeah right um, yeah. all right though the other one is also System Shock too because oh, like yeah. the uh, Again, another great reveal that I think is really well earned by that game is like the mid game reveal about what is actually going on. Mm. I should play that one of these days it, by myself, not on I Play It Forward. A remake coming out. Oh, oh, cool, nice. Well, did Paul that get is a all... shot? Uh huh. Did Paul get a shot to answer? Do we have time? Did he... Uh, I did. We got time for a lightning round. Uh, very, very fast. I mean, I, I'm big into like puzzle games and stuff, which the new game experience is quite important for. But I mean, yeah. I gotta say, I gotta say, like Portal. You know, that mm. there was oh, something yeah. about like the first time I played Portal. In fact, I played Nerbtacular Drop, which was oh yeah, the, right. Which was the like two level demo that the people who ended up do, getting hired by Valve to do Portal did. Uh, As like a student project. Yeah, and there was just something yeah. about the like portal system that just kind of like twigged my brain. I was just like, oh, I get this. And uh, and then on top of it, portal being actually like n uh, actually narratively super awesome, like yeah. one of the one of the best uh, sort of narrative stories in a puzzle game. Um, that's super neat. So and there's also an aspect where it's a super great co-op game, but you can't you have to play it for the first time with somebody else who's also played it the first time 
Like, if you're you've right. already played it and the other person hasn't, you'll just get annoyed with them because they're not <laughs> doing it right. <laughs> so it's, like, something you can't really go back to. But Right. Uh, so, yeah, I think that would definitely be mine. Cool. Well, that is all the time we have for this uh, Camp PAX online Q&A. And I hope that you have enjoyed it. Um, we are all of the names that you see here. And... We are some of Loading Ready Run, and uh, if you're unfamiliar with who we are and you're still here, thanks! Check us out at this on YouTube and Twitch and uh, dot .com and store.this.com. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. Uh, Patreon.com. Patreon.com slash this. I don't remember yeah. what Oh, yeah, said. the Discord. Invite them to the Discord. Oh, yeah, discord.gg slash LRR. It, you do not have to be a subscriber or a member or any of that stuff. Mm. You just come on by. Um, but yeah, thanks Camp PAX for having us. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again at a real PAX at some point, but not for a while. And um, yeah, this has been a ton of fun. So bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>